Do you got gas? Do you need to filter it? Well, I've got three ways to relieve that pressure for you. Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. Today's episode of Prathcar Tries to Make a Useful Tutorial is going to be focusing on gas filtering here using our favorite piece of equipment, which is the electrolyzer. We've done this a bunch of times in the past. You've seen a ton of videos on it. If you haven't, well, guess what? Here's your first one. So these three methods here kind of range from easy but expensive or easy but not safe or safe but not easy. Let's start with the good old gas filter. So just to explain what I have going on here, I have an electrolyzer with a pump on top and a pump on the bottom. If we take a look at the gas overlay, you're going to see that hydrogen is up top with oxygen down here on the bottom. Now there's many, many different ways to set up the electrolyzers. I got a ton of videos on that and that's a whole different tutorial. But in this example here, we need to filter the gas that's going to be running from this top pump. So I have these two pumps hooked up to an automation signal and I just leave the electrolyzer over pressure because uh, that's the right way to set this arrangement up. So enable this, you can see what happens here. We have two types of gas here. We've got oxygen and hydrogen. This could really be a mix of any gases, it doesn't matter. And then in line, I've placed a gas filter. So in this example here, I have a mixed gas in the top pipe, so that's the one I need to filter. So I put a gas filter in line. Dead simple piece of equipment. You pick whatever gas you want to filter, and that's what comes out of the orange line right here. And I've just made this insulated pipe to represent that. All right, so turning this over to oxygen, you can see that that's obviously going to flow out now. But now hydrogen is moving down here, and we're going to end up with a problem. And that is, even though we can move one kilogram of gas through the pipe at a time, it can't be a mixed gas in the same exact tile. So this being 100% oxygen down here doesn't allow the hydrogen anywhere to go. So turning this back over to hydrogen, you can see that even though we have, it, we have oxygen that's flowing in here, since I'm using a gas valve here, that allows the oxygen that comes into this pipe to stack onto the oxygen that's already in this pipe. It's 500 grams in, but on the way out, it ranges anywhere from one kilogram down to 800 or so. Now you don't necessarily need to use a valve. You can use a bridge. You can see that that's working as well. The valve just gives you an opportunity to take up less space and it also allows you to shut the thing off if you need to. Now with any gas system or liquid system, you have to understand what happens to it if the system backs up. So I'm going to let this play out here and you'll see the oxygen down here on the bottom is going to back up and you'll see how that affects everything else. So this oxygen backed up and therefore it stopped everything from running. There's still room for more hydrogen, but since this can't you know, move this oxygen out of here, the pipe becomes blocked. So let's relieve the oxygen and see what happens when the hydrogen backs up. All right, so here we go. The hydrogen is backing up and you'll see that it's going to go until it reaches the filter and then that filter shuts down because its pipe is blocked. At this point, we're still pumping more and more oxygen out of the bottom of this and the electrolyzer in this case is still running now if you let this run long enough there's a good chance that the hydrogen that's building up up here will actually find its way down there to the bottom and i think i just saw it yep so there you have it now it's actually pumping just a little bit of hydrogen that could potentially just be going into your base or potentially some atmo suits or somewhere else where you just don't want hydrogen to go because it might damage things so this arrangement is fairly safe when just the oxygen backs up but it's not so safe when the hydrogen backs up. So if you were to fully automate a system like this, what you could do is create an overflow check. So since gas always flows through the first white block that it has, once this fills up, let's say it's running to a generator, but that generator isn't under a lot of demand. So therefore we just have an excess of hydrogen. Uh, it'll eventually start to flow past here. So I've used a gas element sensor right here under ventilation. It does take a little bit more research to get there, but you can see I've detected, I'm going to set this to hydrogen and it's automation signal right now is saying that it's not detecting hydrogen. So I'm using the not gate from automation to flip that to these two pumps right there. All right, so there we go. We can now see that this thing is going to be detecting hydrogen because it's over, filled itself up and therefore because of that we disable the pumps so you can see that that's now flowed in like this 
and it's saying, hey, we're, we're maxed out on hydrogen, therefore let's keep the system safe. So let's say I set the draw of this to 10 grams a second. You can see that it's just running every now and then. Whenever it clears out enough gas, then it'll start to run again and, you know, does what it needs to do. It stays safe. Now, a lot of people have asked the question, does the gas filter use power when it's only filtering a gas or does it just use it whenever gas flows through it? The answer is it uses power whenever gas is flowing through it, whether it goes out the uh, orange pipe here or the green pipe there. Whenever that is happening, it's going in this one and out one of those two, it consumes 120 watts. So if it's running 100% of the time, that'll add up to 72 kilojoules per cycle, which kind of sounds like a lot. But luckily, the other two options we have here are quite a bit more efficient. All right, so moving on to method number two. So what we are going to use here is a gas shutoff valve right next to a gas pipe element sensor. So this arrangement here is probably the most popular when it comes to kind of freeish energy solutions because all it is is a gas pipe element sensor, a automation wire, and that connects to the gas shutoff valve. So what happens here is that this is set to hydrogen, the gas I want to filter, just like we're doing down here. And then that ends up going into the top pipe here, which is probably going to run to my generator. While the oxygen just moves on by and combines back up down here. Now this gas shutoff valve does require power to be run to it, so I have it connected to my grid right now. It only takes up 10 watts, but here's the thing, no matter what reports I look at here, I've never been able to see how much is being consumed by this gas shutoff valve. Maybe it's currently just not set up in the game or what, but it, for, for the most part, it seems like it's using up no power at all. So if I just run a quick experiment here, I've powered up a very small battery and if I turn this switch off, that disconnects the two wires from each other. So at this point, the power is being drawn out of that battery. You can see that it's going down at a, at a certain rate right there. However, watch what happens when I turn this off so that gas stops flowing, which means this thing is no longer running. That battery is still draining out because it just loses power throughout the day. If I disconnect that wire, yeah, so it's still, it's still draining just like it was before. So this thing is very efficient when compared to the original gas filter. However, it does have one big problem. If you disconnect the power to it, watch what happens. Everything just starts flowing past it. In this case, we ended up with some hydrogen down there, and now this pipe is completely blocked up. You need to come up here and clear out the... Ugh, ugh, oh no, terrible. So if you're connected to a power grid that accidentally hits zero, then you could have a block of gas that goes past this and then ends up down here and uh, the system just isn't effectively filtering gas anymore. So it requires a constant source of power. But how safe is it when the gas completely backs up? Well, you can see here's the oxygen. Uh-oh, oxygen now started flowing through this. Why? Because this thing detects that the next chunk of gas there, oh, it's still detecting enough hydrogen to where it started to pump enough oxygen up in here. So now I got a mixed gas up in this top line, which just destroyed my generator. Oops. All right, so when the hydrogen backs up on the top line here, you can see that now it wants to skip past this and it ends up jamming up the line here. Crap. So there's three different ways that this thing can fail. If either line backs up or if you lose power, gas can go to the wrong place. So if we try to make this thing safe, we have to account for all of those conditions. So to save it from the power, we're going to use a small battery here that's right after a power transformer. That way, even if the power goes out over here, we still have a good long time before, uh, you know, it has any issue. Uh, the pumps would probably turn off but any of the gas that's in the line would at least still be filtered. So that's one safety mechanism. Now, if either of these get backed up, well, we'd run that to an OR gate and then take the knot of that. So this would be looking for hydrogen and this would be looking for oxygen. So when tested for safety here, you can see the hydrogen has now backed up. So it's saying, oh, we're gonna turn off. I'm detecting that. We have to wait till we clear out enough hydrogen. And there we go, it cleared it, so now, oh, oh, yep. The same could happen for oxygen as well. So 
So that starts to back up. <laughs> yeah, you just get this craziness going on. So you can see with this arrangement here, it's actually very simple and cheap to set up if you just want to filter gases. However, if you are in a situation where you might have things backing up on you, it can be a little bit difficult to make safe. So the automated gas shutoff valve is really good for a system that can just be free flowing all the time and you don't have to worry about it backing up or potentially damaging some equipment. However, to make it safe, you can see it gets kind of complicated. Now, I was recently made aware of this last arrangement here from Emily, one of my Patreon supporters who left me a message here on, on my Discord channel. You can find that in the link in the description below. So you guys are gonna love how this one works because it's super clever. So just like we saw in the first example, the two gases can't be in the same tile uh, inside of a pipe or well, anywhere in the game, actually. So the oxygen that's running through here can't get on this little loop of hydrogen that just keeps running around and around. So you can see this is set to one gram a second. So there's just a tiny bit of hydrogen in there. And what we'll have here is that the large chunk of hydrogen will hit this first bridge and end up here. Now it's important, it's really important if you're running a very high volume of, let's say, hydrogen through this. If we had a two to one, two pumps to one pipe, uh, to be, have this running reverse uh, the direction of the pipe down here. So the reason is because you're, you're, the hydrogen here would end up up there and it would move 999 grams. However, one gram might make it past. Or if they're flowing in the same direction, that would add up here and then you would not be able to stack on top of it there. If they're running past each other, then you have two opportunities. So if I'm just packing these pipes full of one kilogram of hydrogen, see what's happening? Just that little bit of hydrogen is still finding its way into the loop and it's able to filter it out. Now to somebody who's extremely observant, uh, what you'll notice is that this loop here, its total capacity keeps going up a little bit. So it's now up to 32 grams. So you can't run this at 100% all the time. But then again, if you're doing 100% all the time, you don't need to filter it in the first place. So there's, there's, that's kind of a technical detail, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. In this arrangement here, you can easily uh, not have to worry about which way this thing is flowing, actually, because the it's only ever fed by one pump. So this particular arrangement can actually be set up like this. And as a matter of fact, you can even go like, probably even like that if you really wanted to. Yep. And that's just because the hydrogen is never saturated, right? All right, so let's test this thing to the point of failure. We're going to back the oxygen up here. And what you can see is it's fairly safe. Everything just backs up and stops. All right, so when the hydrogen backs up on this one, you can see it just keeps adding a little bit more and then it kind of stops right there. And eventually this too will also start to pump hydrogen. So it's really, you know, just like this one down here, except it doesn't use a bunch of power. So one way around that might be to try to bridge these two together so that everything runs through the filter. That, however, will restrict how much this electrolyzer runs. And the reason is because it's outputting one kilogram worth of uh, gas. But since there's two different types of gas, you can't move that much through the pipes because they simply take up more space. So if you're OK with less output, that's one option. So you can see how I made this one safe up there by just adding that little gas valve. However, it is maybe every once in a while kind of confusing the gas that's up there. For the most part, it seems to be doing just fine. You could do this number, and that works too, just to make it safe. All right, so while that is really clever and cool, it isn't necessarily the easiest thing to set up. So here's the best way that I can think of actually of, of how to set this thing up. Uh, so I built this equipment here. I have my loop already ready to go and my valve are ready to go And I've built next to this a gas filter and a gas valve And I've set that gas valve to one gram a second because whatever gas I choose to come out of this gas filter I just want it to very slowly run through the pipe so that I can get that full loop there So just connect that like this and I don't want any more over here because I'll build that later Otherwise you could end up with the wrong gas in there um, and then t on the filter, all I'm going to do is make a loop like that and then use a bridge to bring the gas into that loop. So what this should detect is I have it set to hydrogen. It's going to throw some hydrogen over here. And if, uh, if it's oxygen, it's just going to throw it right back down there. So you see how that just really quickly seeded that loop right there. So now it's good to go. 
And at this point, I can get rid of all that stuff. That's So I just switch it back on over to this thing, like that, and then throw a gas valve right down here. And there you have it, one free energy gas filter setup. Now the cool thing about this entire arrangement here is that you can combine these in very, very creative ways. And like, I can see some people who have played Factoria, they're like, oh man, I'm gonna have all these gas loops and I can just like siphon it off and move everything around. Yeah. Well, let me leave you with a little bit of inspiration. Check this thing out. So this here is a full like base gas filter. So it's, maybe I have some detectors somewhere trying to detect if somebody's farting or, you know, maybe some chlorine escaped or, you know, we just need to clean up some carbon dioxide or whatever. This loop here just has a continuous flow of gas in it. And since I've preceded each one of these with the appropriate type of gas, I can now bottle that stuff up and then just empty it when I need to. So you can see this one right here, we've got 10 gram, 10 kilograms of polluted oxygen. If I empty that, watch what happens. Boom, there we go. And now any polluted oxygen in this loop up here now finds its way into that bottle. <laughs> it doesn't have to go into a canister. It could be a filter. It could be anywhere you really want it to. Again, all you do here is just set this up the, the same way. So you have a gas filter with a valve set to something really low. You run that in first. You know, the first spot it hits, that's what that becomes. The second one that you do, it just skips on over. It goes to this one. It goes to this one. Because that one goes that one, boom, 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 all the way down. Pretty stinking awesome. So, no matter what the game throws at you, you have a way to sort it out. So, there you have it, guys. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Let me know if you got some different ideas for tutorials down there. And if this looks like the channel for you, consider hitting that subscribe button or maybe hitting the bell notification so that you don't miss the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.